Hello and welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Double RTG, otherwise known as the Random Road to Glory. This series where along with no FIFA points, we also use no players from the top nine nations or top five leagues, aside from our GOAT, of course, Carl Jenkinson. Last time out, we kicked off the real evolution grind. Bar, Tolkien, Kano and Brow all getting themselves due for an upgrade. And today we finish it because the work... Well, it just keeps on coming, to be honest. I'm sure, as you already know, Foot Birthday is here. And with it, some of the best Evos we've had so far. I haven't played this game in a while, so it's a bit overwhelming. But I do have a plan. Step one, finish the Evos we're already working on. Step two, start the new birthday Evos. And step three, build the greatest ultimate team the world has ever seen. Speaking of team, this is what we're working with. It's exactly where I left it, i.e. a total mess. But... That is what we're here to change. And we're back. Like I said earlier, it has been a while since I've had a kick about with the boys, but I suppose some things, they just never change. A shocking start to open the day off. Death taxes and conceding early goals. Those are the three inevitables in my life. Also inevitable though, this man get on the score sheet. Shevchenko not wasted any time to draw us back level. And oh, I have missed this fella. Oh, more than you can believe. I've fallen in love a few times in my life, but none of them, none of them can match the way I feel about our Louis vintage strike from the Mexican to give us the lead. Our opponent did try and party poop a touch. A bit rude, if you ask me, but nothing. Nothing was getting in the way of our shine today. Mares responded in a matter of minutes to give us the third. Second 45, and considering we averaged a goal every nine minutes in the first half, I wouldn't be wrong in expecting another goal fest, to be honest. But instead, I was treated to something so much better. A defensive masterclass. Everyone, everyone loves watching the ball hit the back of the net. That's a no-brainer. But there is something just so beautiful about watching 11 men stand together and build a wall in front of that goal. Mende even denying him from 12 yards to cap off a great performance and send us home with three points. Game two, and it's already clear we picked up right where we left off, but even I was at awe of this next goal. Two minutes in, Hernandez to hold it up, feeds it to Kano, and oh, that is just sensational, son. We're adding that to the list of things everyone loves. One, ball hitting the back of the net. Two, absolute line breakers. Got both of them there. Torres putting this one away. We did get another a couple minutes later, but I'm just going to keep that one brief. I want to get to this next bit, and that is Jenko absolutely crunching someone. Oh, it's so good to be back. He clocked Carl was in the mood, did the smart thing and kept it pushing, which takes us perfectly into game number three. Final game of these highlights, and this was a weird one, to be honest. This guy was just adamant on moving the keeper every time. First, it was against Hernandez, who, let's be real, would have bagged regardless. But look at the replay. Goalie just falls flat on his ass. The exact same for Kano, who is continuing to impress despite being like 60 overall. Before Mares, he really just takes the piss, to be honest. Squeezes it inside post to make it three. He did leave with something, to be fair to the lad. Not a goal, a red card, but regardless, all in all, it was never in doubt. 3-0, game over. Let's have a look at those Evos. And boy, are they looking good. Bar ticked. Tolkien ticked. Kano, not quite ticked, but the man could be like 12 overall, to be honest. It'd still be a world beater. So we'll get to him eventually. For now, it's time to have some fun. So, of course, we're going to start where we always do, having a little jolly up down the old SBC list. And from struggling for centre-backs, we have bagged two crackers in two episodes. First, it was Sanchez, and now it's the former Southampton man, Maya Yoshida. Don't need to add much to this one. No-brainer, to be honest. Great stats, good play styles, and cost about as much as a Mars bar. So, had to be done. Got to be spending a fair whack on these next few players, though. First, is Yoshida's countryman, Kawabi, to join the team. A cracking name and an even better card, to to be honest. I'm not sure where I'm going to play him because 1 through 11, odds are this bloke could do his shift there. He is quality. Next up, it was the Andalek duo. First, Kasper Schmeichel. I have nothing to add here. He is just in the team to keep this next bloke happy and that is Jan Vertonghen. New in form and a new centre-back to add to our ever growing collection. Final player of our shopping spree and one I've had my arm for a minute now actually and that is the Nigerian Nawakar mate. I'm not sure if that's how you say it. Actually I'm almost certain that's not how you say it but fortunately for us his first name's Anthony so I won't have to butcher that surname any more than I already have. His card is pretty average to be honest but if you bear with me there are two things which make this man a superstar. One Finesse Shot Plus. I think he's the only card in the game we can use with that play style which is already a win to be honest, but it gets so much 
better. And that is thanks to a trait all my outfield players share, Evolutions. We're starting with the big one. 100k down the drain, but worth every penny and more. As thanks to Jack of All Trades, Anthony gets himself a huge upgrade. First touch plus, great stat boost, but the real selling point here, five star skills, five star weak foot. Need I say more? Next up is back to Belgium as it's Andelec's finest to get himself a little boost. Not as exciting as the last one, but that's exactly what I want from my centre half. No frills, strictly business. Last but not least, a little birthday magic sprinkled on our new centre mid. I said earlier, I'm going to struggle to know his best position. And with this upgrade, I think I've made my job even harder. So I'll it. This is the real king right here. First job on the agenda, though. I sound like a broken record at this point because you guessed it. It's upgrades. We've chucked ourselves back in the deep end. A lot of work to be done, but it will all be worth it when you see the beauty that I concocted. She is just breathtaking, and that's without the upgrades. Obviously, I am not a psychopath, so we'll not be playing three at the back. Instead, this is how we'll be lined up in-game. Tolkien will drop into left back, El Yamik on the right. We'll essentially be playing three centre-halves in attack, just letting the American bomb up and down that left flank. I've settled on Jenko and Karabi in the double pivot, a title-winning combo, if you ask me. Then up top, some familiar faces, Torres, Sheva, Louis now joined by our Nigerian superstar on the left. So, game one with the new team. I was very excited to see what they were made of, but clearly they've inherited the early goal curse off the old lot because it wasn't long at all before we conceded the first. The difference this time, however, was it wasn't just the early goals we were conceding. We were conceding all f***ing game. I weren't playing my best FIFA. I can take that one on the chin. But even if I was... Even if I was quite literally in the form of my life, a certain Kasper Schmeichel would find a way to ruin it. This man was more than useless. There are around 200,000 words in the English language and not one, not a single one, accurately describes how bad this man is at shot stopping. It was actually hard to watch at times. This one got to 4-0 before I pulled the plug. Going into this next one, I was hoping, praying that the last game was an anomaly, that he was just really, really good and we played really, really bad. And to be honest, it did seem that way. Anthony taking no time at all to bag his first for the club. He weren't the only newbie to get on the score sheet, though. Cowaby not to be left behind, kicking off his tally less than 10 minutes later before it's one of the old boys to cap off a great display. 3-0 courtesy of Shevchenko. And I thought at that point, we might have turned it around at this show that it was back on the road. And it was in a sense in that I definitely, after two games, cracked the code of how to win with this team. Essentially, if you just hear me out, it's very simple. You just can't let the other team shoot. You tick that box, you're good to go. Unfortunately, that couldn't have been further from the case in this one. Lord, give me strength because I don't know what Casper's waving his arms at there because there's no way, there's no way that that's an attempt to save the football. Oh, it did matter in the end, to be fair. I'd say it was a long day at the office, but it was actually an incredibly short one as I was 3-0 down in 22 minutes. And yeah, short episode, but that'll be me, thanks. Well... That didn't go to plan, did it? I couldn't quite tell you what happened there. All I know is it was very, very bad. And speaking of very bad, first job on the agenda, say goodbye to Casper, everyone. You will never be seeing him again in any FIFA I play ever. And there is a lot of FIFA to be playing to get this team up to scratch. I'm hoping it's just because the team's not upgraded yet. Because if it's not, we are in some big trouble. Regardless, we'll sort something out. And next episode, we go again. As for now, that is all, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for watching. If you have enjoyed, remember to like, comment, and subscribe. I hope you have a wonderful day, whatever it is you are doing. And as always, I hope to see you next time.